Hi folks, hope you're well. Welcome to this video on venous return. Venous return is a question that can come up on uh, the vascular system. It's to do with the blood vessels. So we'll start with just, you know, really quickly, just breaking it down. What we're talking about here, Venus, not the planet, because it's O-U-S at the end. We are talking about veins, okay? So the blood vessel that venous return is referring to are veins. And as we know, what do veins do? They always carry blood back to the heart okay so veins carry blood back to the heart and obviously the return bit is increasing the return of blood in other words how do we and how do the veins get blood back to the heart? Now that you might just go, well, well, they do. The point is, what we're referring to here is during exercise. When you're exercising, your muscles are producing very high levels of carbon dioxide, lactic acid, things like that. That blood has to get back to the heart very, very quickly so that it can then drop get to the lungs drop off the co2 pick up fresh oxygen then get back then get back to the working muscles again so whilst you're at rest venous return is taking place blood is gradually flowing back to the heart via the veins okay during exercise that needs to increase that needs to increase massively so how can we go about increasing the return of blood back to the heart now where's the major problem a couple of very very crude diagrams appeared but the problem is, particularly with the muscles in the legs, yeah, believe it or not, that's supposed to be a leg, well, a foot, and then going up into your lower leg. Not the best drawer in the world, as you already know. The main problem is that the blood is trying to get from the muscles in the legs, because remember, the legs are the ones that are doing the bulk of the work for the vast majority of sports. So they're the ones that are producing the highest levels of CO2. It's where the bigger muscle groups are. They're going to be producing the high levels of lactic acid. The blood has got to get back up there. But what is always acting against us is gravity. Gravity is always trying to pull the blood back down into the legs. So what we're talking about in venous return is how can we help the body overcome gravity and help return the blood back to that, particularly from the lower body. Now, there are three or four key mechanisms. I'm going to go through all four that help increase venous return, help increase the flow of blood back to the heart. I'm going to look at them one at a time now. Now, these are in no particular order, just the order that I'm going to go through them with you. So I've, I've numbered them so you can see that there are four that we're going to look at. This is number one, the muscle pump mechanism. Now, what have we got indicated on here? Well, as you can see, the blue structures, these are the veins, okay? Now, veins, remember... Although it's capillaries that pass through muscles and things like that, veins travel in between muscles, in between muscle groups as they wind their way back to the heart. So what we've got here is we've got a vein somewhere in the lower leg. Could be, a, could be a, you know, gastrocnemius type location, or it could be up near the quadriceps, the hamstrings. It doesn't matter. What we're seeing is though this vein is passing through two muscle groups. When the muscle is relaxed, the vein is open and blood will collect these are little valves here to stop the blood flowing back down now what happens when you do a cool down when you jog at the end of an activity or even when you're running during the activity the muscles contract and they bulge outwards as muscles do like when you contract your bicep when you're showing off the muscles bulge and they're going to squeeze on the vein now that isn't going to close the vein it's going to squeeze the blood up into the next little chamber. So all the blood that's collecting between these two pairs of valves here, that's going to stay there. But when the muscles contract, they will squeeze, the valve will pop open at the top, and the blood will be forced back to the heart. So how can we term that in the exam? Well, that's it there. How to increase venous return. Method number one, the muscle pump mechanism. Muscles contract and pump the blood in the veins back to the heart. Simple as that. So number one, the muscle pump mechanism. So then, mechanism number two. 
Now, you might you be looking at this picture going, that is unbelievably similar to the last picture we've just looked at. There seems to be muscles contracting, squeezing on a vein and pushing blood back to the heart. Because as the, as the muscles contract, the valve above it opens, the valve below prevents the backflow and the blood goes back to the heart. You are exactly right. However, this is called the respiratory or breathing mechanism. Remember, the muscles in the legs will contract and create a muscle pump mechanism. But remember, the muscles at the legs finish at your waist. Now, I know that sounds a bit obvious, but they do. Your heart has got to go another foot. So the blood has got to go another foot, a foot and a half to get up to the heart. Okay? Now, if you thought the last diagram was back, check out that bad boy. God knows what's going on with the face, but we'll brush over that one. Okay? So, what's happening is, mechanism number one, the muscles in the legs are contracting, they're squeezing on the veins and forcing the blood back in the direction of the heart. But as I've just said there, that's where the muscles in your legs end. And we've still now got to get the blood that far up to the heart. So what we've also got is the respiratory or breathing mechanism. All of this thoracic cavity, all of this chest cavity is full of muscles as well. Your diaphragm, your abdominals, your intercostals between the ribs, all these key muscle groups. So what are they going to do? They're going to do exactly the same as what the leg muscles do. When you breathe in and all the muscles contract, they're going to squeeze on the veins and force the blood back to the heart as well. So how can we, how can we write that in a way that's going to get us another mark in the exam? And there we are. Just as the muscles in the legs squeeze, contracted, compress the veins and force the blood back towards the heart, this time... The muscles in your abs, okay, your intercostals, all things like that in your ribs, they're going to squeeze all the veins around them and they're going to compress the blood back to the heart, that last foot, foot and a half up to your heart tissue. So mechanism number one, the muscle pump. Mechanism number two, the respiratory or the breathing mechanism. Mechanism number three, this is going to be absolute rapid the actual valves in the veins themselves. Everything that we've just said, the, the muscle pump and the breathing mechanism, they wouldn't work if there weren't valves in the veins stopping the blood from flowing in the wrong direction. When those muscles contract here and here, blood is going to get forced upwards. Well, what's to stop it from getting forced back downwards again? Well, these valves. They will automatically shut below the muscular contraction. So they will prevent the blood from flowing in the wrong direction. So really, really simple. How do we articulate that in the exam? Simple. We just put that pocket valves in veins that prevent backflow of blood. The reason they're called pocket valves, in case you're just wondering, if there is the wall of a vein, the valves are shaped like that. So they're supposed to represent like pockets on your jeans and things like that. So as we said, when the muscles contract, the valves will open and the blood will flow in that direction. But what they will prevent is blood falling back down towards the feet. So gravity is going to try and pull it down. The pocket valves are going to prevent that from happening. And so finally, the fourth key mechanism of how we help blood flow back to the heart. This only has a very, very small effect, but it's enough to make, you know, a valid contribution. As the vein, or as the main vein, the vena cavas, the vena cavas, however you want to pronounce them, are carrying blood back into the heart, deoxygenated blood coming into the heart. What is the job of the right atria here? The right atria is going to contract, squeeze and force the blood down into the right ventricle. That's its job. What you've got to do here is think about when you've got an empty bottle, an empty drinks bottle or something like that and you submerge it in water and you squeeze the air out of the bottle. When you then let go of the bottle, it will suck water into it. That is exactly what is happening with this right ventricle here. Once it has contracted and squeezed the blood into the right ventricle, as that right atrium then opens up, as it goes into the diastole phase, as it relaxes, it will naturally suck more blood into it at a quicker rate. Okay, so the, the muscle pump, the respiratory mechanism, the pocket valves have helped get all this blood back up to here. And the final thing that's actually going to draw it into the heart very, very quickly is the suction effect of the heart. Now, I'm not going to write anything down. I'm not going to say what would we write in the exam for this because we would write that. The suction effect of the heart will also increase venous return. 
okay? So vein should turn very, very quickly. How do we increase blood flow back to the heart during exercise? Well, we use the four mechanisms that we've said there, okay? And finally, just one other little top tip that um, I wanted to make sure I, I told you about is it's also, the they also like to ask this about, oops, if I just put my pen on, they also like to ask this about cool downs. Why are cool downs so important? Why should we always do a cool down? Well, if you think you've just played your sport for however long, you've built up lots of CO2, lots of lactic acid, what have you got to do? You've got to get the blood back to the heart very, very quickly. By going for a light jog, following a game, and then a light stretch, what are you actually doing? Well, that is what you are doing as part of a cool down. By the muscles contracting in your light in your light jog, you are increasing the muscle pump. You are increasing the flow of blood back to the heart. By doing a light jog, your heart rate and breathing rate are staying elevated. So you are increasing your breathing mechanism and helping blood get back to the heart. Because your heart rate is still slightly elevated due to the light jog, you are increasing the suction effect of the heart and keeping the blood flowing back to the heart. And also, obviously, the pocket valves are always preventing the backflow. So that is how you answer a question on venous return. So look out for that key term, venous, veins, return, returning blood back to the heart. How can our body help increase that during and after exercise? Good luck with it, folks.